Hi there, my name is Ian Compton. I'm the senior designer for Bullet Run, and uh, I'm here to show GameSpot all about our new game. So, Bullet Run's a uh, brand new first person shooter. It's a free to play game. We've developed it in Germany as a uh, AAA quality experience. As you can see, my colleague Chris, the community manager, he's taking us through the uh, front end of the game at the moment, showing us all the different customization options available to the players in the game. In Bullet Run, players are contestants in a reality TV show. So uh, it's important that they look um, different and unique, and they stand out for the camera. It's all about looking good rather than just being good. As you can see, we put a lot of uh, funky and uh, cool outfits in the in the shop. You'll find the usual uh, camera outfits and uh, street clothes, but then we put a twist on them as well with these crazy patterns, face paints, punk haircuts, all that kind of cool stuff. You also customize your weapons. You can add uh, decals and uh, skins to your weapons to make your, your weapons look as unique as you, you do. And you can also modify them to uh, make them uh, perform better uh, with your playstyle. You can change the way that your weapon handles. If you have, a, for example, here you've got the uh, black P90. You can put a laser dot on it, makes it a little bit more accurate. Or maybe you want to uh, put the, uh, take the uh, red dot sight off and stick a uh, iron sights on there or an aim point or, or whatever. There's a lot of different options available to you. Okay, should we jump into a game then, Chris? See what's going on. We have two game modes in the match. We have Team Deathmatch and Dominion. Team Deathmatch is the uh, classic shooter uh, game mode. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Dominion's a uh, capture and control kind of uh, game mode. One team's attacking, one team's defending. We're going to jump into a Team Deathmatch just to show you what this game's about. So. As you can see, he's got four weapon loadouts you can choose between when he starts the game. You can set these up before the match, and you can put the same weapon in multiple loadouts with different mod options in there. So, for example, here he's got a P90. If he really likes the P90 and he wants to have uh, different P90s and different loadouts, he can do that. He can have a P90 with a long range setup in one loadout, P90 with uh, like high damage loadout in another, in another loadout, he, and he can, he can switch it around if he likes. You can also set up a secondary weapon and grenade types for each loadout as well. So, you can make your, uh, your entire um, outfit to match your, your playstyle. So everything in the game is based around heat. Uh, heat's our mechanic which we use to determine how well the audience is getting behind your show. But it, like I say, it's uh, not so much about how good you are, it's how good you look doing it. It's all about putting on a show for the audience back at watching the TV show. So uh, when you kill someone, you get a little bit of heat. When you kill someone in a cool way, or you, or you get some, um, so, so some you get some bonus heat for doing this. But here, you just got 25 heat for killing that guy. That's a basic award. And now he's taunting to, to multiply his heat. Every time you earn heat, you can, you can taunt, and it multiplies the heat you just earned. But you're quite vulnerable, as Chris is discovering. That's twice now it's happened to him. He starts taunting, and all of a sudden, someone comes on the corner, takes him down. Now, how long do you have after you kill somebody? So what happens is, when you, earn taunt, uh, when you earn heat, it goes into a buffer. It's kind of like a combo meter. It stays there for a few seconds, and it gets moved into your total. If you earn more heat in that time, then the, uh, the heat gets added together. And it's, uh, you can then unlock additional uh, heat bonuses for, for chaining together combos. While the heat's in the buffer, you can taunt. So as long as there's heat in your buffer, you can taunt. So if you see um, when he spawns again, I'll show you. At the bottom of the screen, you can see there's a bar with uh, some uh, icons in it. The icons are the skills, and the, uh, the bar is uh, showing his heat and his heat buffer. And he spawns, you can see. So you see he's got 71 heat at the moment. And then next to it, where it says heat, that's his buffer. So the skills are kind of important as well. So you see now he has heat in his buffer, he has 25 heat in his buffer. He can taunt now if he wants to, or he can try and push and move forward. Now he's taunting, you see the multiplier is building up, and when he finishes the taunt, he earns bonus heat based on that. As he earns heat, he's unlocking these skills. These are the little icons next to his heat total there. To start with, he earns access to the first one, which in Chris's case is a Medigel, it's a self-heal. The second one he's got is a Neurofang, it's a remote control robot drone. And you can see he's about three quarters of the way to unlocking that. The more heat he earns, as he earns heat, he, he unlocks these skills in turn and these skills give him uh, new tactical options in the game. So obviously the Medigel is a heal, um, it gives him some, some hit points back, and uh, also a heal over time if he's uh, if trained it up to a high enough level. The uh, Nero Fang is a little remote control robot drone, and uh, he, as soon as uh, Chris earns some more heat, he'll uh, show you how this works. Can you customize which heat bonus you want? No, you get the same heat bonuses depending on, obviously you can try and play for different heat bonuses and try and get um, specific, uh, specific ones. I mean, we put a lot of different heat bonuses in the game, so if you kill someone in a stylish manner, you get heat for that. So, the basic kill gives you 25 heat. If you kill someone in a headshot, you get bonus heat for that. If you kill someone who's your nemesis, you get bonus heat for that as well. If you die a bunch of times and then you finally come back and you manage to get a kill after dying five or six times, you get heat for that one too. 
So we put a lot of things in the game where you can get bonus heat for all kinds of different things. We want to reward stylish and exciting play rather than holding back and being conservative. I was referring to like the specific abilities. Oh, oh the skills. Like oh, okay, sorry. So, so, yeah, the skills, yes. Yeah. There are eight skills in the game. You choose four of them to take into a match with you. So uh, here you can see he's got the, med the Medigel, which is the first one. The second one he's nearly unlocked is the uh, Neurofang. And then he has the T6 Defender, which is a little sentry turret. And then he has a Mortar Strike, which is a very powerful uh, area effect um, airstrike. So now he's unlocked the Neurofang. He's going to surprise the moment. You can send it off by itself to do its own thing, or you can do what Chris is doing here and pilot it manually. And it's kind of a little fun thing. It doesn't do damage to players. What it does is it attacks somebody. We're going to find out in a moment. It catches this guy. It is it locks you in place for a few seconds. Oh, missed. Yay. Oh. Yo. What? Okay. Chris is not a skilled Neurofang pilot. So what, ha so what happens when you let it go off? So when it, when it goes off by itself, it will sit in the corner and it will just wait until someone walks past and it will attach to them. And when it attaches to somebody, it holds them in place for a few seconds. It locks them in place, so they have a little cage graphic around them, and they can't move. I also reset the energy and all their skills, so they're, uh, they're, 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 they're kind of screwed. So what will happen then is you can, if you then uh, come along and, and, and pop that person yourself, you get bonus heat for doing that, because you set up a humiliation kill with it. Or somebody else kills them, then you get some bonus heat because you help set up the, 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 the event. You don't get as much heat, obviously. Um, it's also a really useful thing when you're playing objective-based get, objective game modes. You can use it to scout, so you can, because uh, it has a little camera on it, you can just send it off ahead, see what's waiting for you around the next corner. So all our skills have these kind of multiple uses. They have these um, different tactical options you can use in different situations. So it's, 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 players can really experiment with how they use the skills and try and find new ways to, uh, to get value from, from, from the abilities in the game. And what we find with this is that actually it's, um, it changes the way the game plays. As the game continues, as the, uh, as the time goes on, as the players are unlocking new abilities and earning heat, uh, the, the, the actual gameplay itself uh, changes. So players have to adapt to this all the time. There's new things being put into play all the time, and they have to, uh, players have to uh, adapt to a changing tactical environment. Obviously, at the beginning of the game, you don't have to worry about running into turrets, but towards the end of the game, they're going to be everywhere. So you need to be really on your toes and think about what's, what you're going to be doing. So even in a very simple game like uh, uh, Team Deathmatch, it's, um, it's, it's a big challenge to, to, to keep up with what's happening in the game and what, uh, what sort of things you need to be looking out for. Can you customize your font? You can, yeah. There's, there's, there's a whole bunch of different taunts, and you can choose four taunts to take into the match with you as well. You just select to buy the pie menu you just saw Chris bring up here. He's going to use the new thing again, see if he's more successful this time. Oh, this one he sent off by itself. So if somebody walks past it, there you go. So he's got the new thing. There you go. And then you got bonus heat at the top. You saw the top of the screen there for the uh, uh, things he did. And because he chained together a lot of heat at once, and he got a lot of heat in his buffer at the same time, he got uh, bonus heat for that as well, because basically he's on fire right now, and the audience is going, oh my god, Chris is, Chris is awesome, Chris is awesome. So he's getting the crowd behind him, he's burning it in bonus heat. At the end of the match, his heat is going to be used to calculate his rewards as well. So uh, the better he does in the game, the more heat he earns in the game, uh, the more fans he'll earn after the match, which basically XP, the more fans you have, the more famous you are, and the more credits he'll earn. Credits is our in-game currency. So he'll be able to buy new outfits, he'll be able to upgrade his uh, uh, skills, check out new weapons, new weapon mods, buy new taunts, all this kind of stuff. Everything in the game that you bring into a match can be bought with in-game currency. You don't have to uh, pay us any money at all. You still have access to all the same items, accessories, skill upgrades that paying players do. Uh, what we're doing is we're selling convenience rather than power. So there's no gold ammunition or premium, uh, premium weapons or anything like that. Um, everything in the game is available to either free-to-play players or paying players. And then what sort of changes is there to your heat when you get killed? So, what we do is, what we try to do is we try to, uh, obviously, uh, first person shoot is a very competitive environment. So, um, there's obviously a lot of, um, uh, it can be quite intimidating for, for weaker players when you come into a server. And we, what, we don't, what we really don't want is we don't want people to come into our game, uh, play it for five minutes, get killed over and over again, and then feel they've wasted their time. So what we do is, everything in our game is designed to, not so much to hold back, uh, stronger players, because you don't want to hold those guys back at all, but to give weaker players a boost, make them feel that they've, they've done something useful. So, um, when you die, you lose heat from your buffer. We never take heat away from the total you've earned, only from your buffer. So if you haven't done your heat from your buffer and you die, you don't lose anything at all. So if you die over and over again, you spawn, you die, you spawn, you die, you're not losing anything except time. Um, you lose the potential to earn Well, it's only, yeah, it's, but it's like, yeah, exactly. We've also put a bunch of heat events in the game specifically to help weaker players as well, so they can help take some heat as well. So, for example, if you kill the guy who's top of the leaderboard in the enemy team, you get bonus heat for that because he's the top dog. Yeah. 
it doesn't matter who you are, you get that, that bonus thing. If you get killed a bunch of times, then you finally manage to get a kill, then suddenly the crowd's rooting for you, you're the underdog, so you get bonus seats for that as well. So We're trying, we're trying to um, bring weaker players up rather than hold stronger players down. There isn't a formal clan system. We do have a buddy system. You can obviously, uh, we have a comm center, you can add buddies to your buddy system and you can um, jump into their game. Oh, that was cheeky. <laughs> Um, you can jump straight into their games when you uh, have them. So he's about to fire up the mortar here. This is a very powerful area effect attack. He's got um, this little designator here you can aim at. He also, if you right click, you can choose a, a map. Uh, you can take it on the map. So bring down an airstrike. It only um, happens um, outdoors, so you can't bring it down under a, under a uh, roof. And now he's going to be nasty and put a turret here. So this, this is quite a busy thoroughfare. People come past you all the time, so his turret's probably going to get quite a lot of cheeky kills. Turrets are really, another really handy skill to have. They have a lot of different um, uses. Uh, you can use them either to, um, like Chris is doing here, stick them into a busy area and um, uh, try and get some cheap kills. Or you can uh, use it as a, as a guard for your back because you get notified when your turret is shooting at something. So if you're setting up a sniper perch, put a turret behind you. Not only will it stop people from coming up behind you and popping you, but also it will give you a heads up that there's somebody coming, coming your way. Yeah, so we've, been, we've actually live now. We've been live in Europe and North America for a couple of weeks now. We had a very successful beta run by Sony Online Entertainment. Uh, we had a lot of great feedback from the players and uh, we're working very hard to try and implement a lot of that uh, right now, actually. Uh, we're getting a lot of good feedback from the players in the live game on our, on our forums, uh, a lot of information from uh, Sony's community team. And uh, we're getting a lot of, uh, we've been seeing a lot of players logging into our game every day, having fun in Bullet Run. The players can go to bulletrunthegame.com, uh, download the client, start playing today, completely free.